Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to my guide on how I play KSP without the use of Delta V. Now of course, before I can dive into that I first have to explain what Delta V is and how it can help you to build rockets. I actually have a video on that already and you can check it out but to sum it up V stands for velocity and the delta is used in maths to indicate a difference between two values, hence the Greek capital D. In this case the speed before and after a burn is meant so knowing the delta V of your rocket you can exactly tell how much you can accelerate your payload. Now this alone does not help you yet but there are so called delta V maps for KSP which tell you exactly how much delta V you need to go anywhere. I noticed a lot of people saying KSP is unplayable without Kerbal Engineer recently so I thought to share how I can avoid using it and still be somewhat efficient, both time and fund wise. When I started playing KSP it usually looked like this. I built a nice payload, in this case an Apollo style Moonlander and what followed next was always the same. I've built a new launcher over and over. No matter what I wanted to get into space I designed an entirely new rocket around it. That's of course what you can do in KSP but reality is quite different. There is a certain number of launch vehicles like the Atlas V, Falcon 9 or Vega rockets and you have to actually design your payload to match those capabilities. You can't just take a payload designed for a Falcon 9 and launch it with an Atlas V so all the customers from SpaceX now have to wait until their rocket is ready to launch again. So the first step in order to be efficient without Delta V is to build standard launch vehicles or SLVs for short to use over and over. For this video I designed three. The first one is Launcher S and at this point I have no idea how much payload it can bring to orbit. To find that out there is a trick and you only need to launch it once. And here it comes. At fuel tanks the rocket can drain as a payload. You can stack so many until you reach the rocket's maximum takeoff weight. Now to find out how much a rocket can lift you simply add up all the thrust you have available. In my case it is just one swivel engine with 168 kilonewtons of thrust. Newton is a unit for force needed to accelerate 1 kg mass by 1 meter per second per second and kilo just stands for 1000. So in my case the rocket can accelerate 168,000 kilograms or 168 metric tons by 1 meter per second per second. However, in order to lift from the ground the acceleration has to be higher than gravity which is roughly 10 meters per second per second. So in order to find out how much your rocket can lift you simply divide your total thrust by 10 which is 16.8 tons. The mass of the rocket is currently 12.4 tons as you can see in the bottom right corner which means I can still add quite some weight to it. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. That should be enough since I needed a little spare performance to go up and not just hover over the launch pad. If you use a decoupler like I do, make sure to enable crossfeed so the upper stage can actually use the payload's fuel. Adding my custom launch clamps, fixing my staging and I am ready to go. 3, 2, 1 and lift off. Now fast forwarding the launch which this video is not about, I reach orbit with 3.5 tanks left. What this means I can add one and a half tanks to my upper stage and know exactly that I can lift three and a half tanks to low carbon orbit. That's how I find out how much my rockets can lift. Back in the VAB I can add the fuel tanks to my upper stage and also check the mass of three and almost a half fuel tanks. Well it's exactly two tons. Important to note is the fairing size. Changing it will change my payload capacity slightly. The next step for me is to save the rocket as a subassembly. In case you can't grab it by the decoupler like I do, simply choose a root parts tool and select the payload with it. Now it should work. Now I know how much my rocket can lift to low carbon orbit and I can do the same procedure as every year, I mean with different size rockets. My launcher as heavy for example is derived from the rocket I have just built, adding two first stage boosters to the side similar to the delta for heavy. I could repeat the same process but I actually want to go to the moon so I have to find out how much payload I can throw there. I do exactly the same, I add fuel tanks until I reach my maximum capacity and launch. What I want to mention is the side boosters carry a little less fuel than the core so I can separate them earlier. What I also do during ascent is to turn down the thrust of the core stage to save some fuel on it since I don't need all the thrust anymore. Having less fuel on the core boosters I can add more to my upper stage which has a more efficient engine, the Terrier. However that is just me and you could also simply add a third strap on booster because why not. 
Reaching orbit, I keep pushing further and further until my trajectory crosses the moon once. This is also called a transmunar injection. I'm now left with almost 4 full tanks and 1 empty which again means I can add a little more than 1 to my upper stage. My maximum payload will be a little less than 4 which turns out to be roughly 4.5 tons. I can now use this information to build a nice moon lander and be totally sure I can push it there. However, I still don't know whether 4.5 tons are enough to build a lander or even return Jebediah back to Kerbin. Well, it has taken a single test launch to find out how much payload my rocket can deliver to the moon so I can simply do the same with a lander. I built a very basic one which mostly consists out of fuel tanks again and I can repeat the same process I have just done to check whether it has enough capability to carry a capsule to the moon's surface and even back home. This shall do it, it is pretty similar to the payload before just now features some landing legs and a small engine. I also add a fuel tank to the upper stage which has the amount of fuel I needed from the payload before. Now a last check to see if I don't exceed 4.5 tons and I'm ready. Ok, 3, 2, 1 and liftoff. Liftoff of Launcher S Heavy for the National Kerbal Essences office. The launch is not different from the one before but I have to make sure the moon is at the right place just above the horizon. Like that I can simply burn directly towards it getting an encounter. This is the only difference to the launch before and as my apoapsis raises I can check my close flyby around the moon. I choose a very low altitude so I can directly land without having to circleize the orbit first. A new feature of KSP 1.2 by the way is a craft hibernation capability. It is pretty important to put the craft into that state to avoid running out of energy since the consumption is kept at a minimum. I could of course add solar panels but I want to keep this specific craft as basic as possible. Now finally at the moon I burn retrograde and it takes quite long to kill all the speed such an encounter causes but I eventually end up plummeting vertically to the surface. Having a relatively smooth touchdown I can now check the amount of fuel I have left. It's roughly 2 tanks which should be more heavy than a capsule so I could replace them with one and land jab on the moon. However I also want to get him back so I'll try if I can launch this lander away from the moon on a re-entry back to Kerbin. Without further ado, I have nothing to lose. I can easily reach a circular orbit but have to wait a little for my final escape burn so I can actually leave the moon in the opposite direction of its orbit to decrease my overall trajectory around Kerbin. And 25 kilometers should be enough to break down for a direct landing. Wow, I am left with one and one third tank. That could actually be enough but I'll have to check in the VAB. Ok, these are roughly 1.5 tons and it is enough to stick a capsule, a parachute and a heat shield on top the lander. I now simply replace a single tank with it and also drop the half one. Important to note is I remove the monopropellant inside the capsule and also decrease the ablator on the heat shield to the minimum I need for a re-entry with just a light capsule. To save further weight I decide to build an interstage fairing instead of a closed one. The capsule should be pointy enough for that. And here it comes the hopefully final launch to prove you can indeed play KSP without using Delta V in a somewhat efficient and also painless way. Getting to space is absolutely routine at this point and I don't have to worry running out of fuel as long as I fly the same trajectory. Fast forwarding to the moon flyby I am almost certain I can do it. The neat thing about a direct landing burn without circularizations is you can see whether you have enough fuel to get back or not. The trajectory I have to fly to return to Kerbin is the same so if I have half or a little less fuel left I can return without any problem. It looks really good so far and here comes the landing. Just before touchdown I switch my SAS to hold its current orientation just to avoid it flipping out since the retrograde marker does weird things once I come close to zero velocity. And touchdown. Now the obligatory flag with a little self promotion and Jeb is ready to head home. I am relatively close to the equator so I can simply burn eastwards at 90 degrees as I do on Kerbin. I disable my engine's gimbal to use a little more of my monopropellant just to be sure not to carry too much. It looks like it will get fairly close but I am still confident. Ok, that's a circular orbit but I go a little higher just to avoid smashing into some cliffs as I wait for the right spot to do my final burn. This should be right and go. Come on, easy. 25 kilometers are enough to slow my capsule down while I still keep the forces relatively low. In case P1.2 they added the option to actually die from g-forces but parts can now also break for the same reason. Goodbye Min. 
a quick time warp and Jeb is almost home. Okay, that shall conclude this little guide and I hope to see you next video if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.